Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to read or interpret a line plot involving halves, and then also how to create a line plot involving halves. We will start with interpreting a line plot and then move on to creating a line plot. Now remember, a line plot is a type of graph that displays data along a number line. We use X's above the number line to show the number of times something occurs. Basically, line plots help us organize and present data. Let's jump into our first example where we have a line plot and then we have four questions to see if we can read and understand the line plot. For our example, it says, AJ built towers out of blocks. He measured the height of each tower to the nearest half inch and created a line plot to display the heights. Now looking at the line plot, we have a title up top right here that tells us what the line plot is about, what it's showing us. The title says, Heights of AJ's Block Towers. And then we have our number line right here. It starts at eight and counts up by one half to 11 and a half. And then underneath the line plot, under the number line, we have inches. That's our unit of measure. That tells us what the numbers on the number line represent. So those numbers represent inches. Then each X represents a tower. For example, if we look at 11 and a half, we have one X above that. That means one tower was 11 and a half inches. Let's jump into our questions now, starting with number one, where we have, what was the height of the shortest tower AJ built? Well, we need to look for the smallest number in value on our number line with at least one X above it. That's going to be eight, eight inches. And that's the shortest tower AJ built. So going back to the question, what was the height of the shortest tower AJ built? Eight inches. Moving on to number two, we have how many towers did AJ build? So for this, we need to see how many total X's are included on the line plot. Each X represents a tower, so we need to count all of the towers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So how many towers did AJ build? Fifteen towers. Moving on to number three, we have how many towers were less than 10 inches tall? Let's start by finding 10 inches. That's right here. We need all of the towers less than 10 inches. So we need all of the towers to the left of 10 inches on the number line. So we're looking at eight inches, eight and a half inches, nine inches, and nine and a half inches. We have one, two, three, four. So how many towers were less than 10 inches tall? Four towers. Lastly, number four, we have what was the most common height? In other words, which height occurred the most number of times? Well, eight inches occurred once, eight and a half inches occurred zero times, nine inches occurred three times, nine and a half inches occurred zero times, 10 inches occurred three times, 10 and a half inches occurred two times, 11 inches occurred five times, and then 11 and a half inches occurred once. So the most common height was 11 inches. It occurred five times, five towers were 11 inches tall. So looking at the question, what was the most common height? 11 inches. So there's how to read and understand a line plot. Let's move on to creating a line plot. Now let's take a look at creating a line plot. Let's jump into our example where we have, Jalen has a collection of plants in his house. 
He measured the height of each plant to the nearest half inch. Create a line plot to display the heights. So here are the heights of the plants to the nearest half inch. Now when creating a line plot, the first thing that we may need to do is organize our data, the numbers we are working with. You may be working with data that is already organized, maybe in a table, ordered from least to greatest, or whatever the case may be. If your data is already organized, then you can skip this step. It's already done. For this example, the data isn't organized. We just have a list of numbers in no particular order. So our first step here, we need to organize the data. We're going to put it in order from least to greatest, and this will make the data, the numbers, much easier to work with. Let's start with the least, and that looks like it's going to be eight, eight inches. And there was one plant that was eight inches tall. So let's start with eight here, and then we move on to eight and a half. We have one, two plants that were eight and a half inches tall. So one, two. Next we have nine, and it doesn't look like we have any plants that were nine inches tall, so we can move on to nine and a half. We have one, two, three. So three plants were nine and a half inches tall. So one, two, three. Next we have 10 and it looks like we have one, two plants that were 10 inches tall. So one, two. Next we have 10 and a half. One, two, three, four, Five. So five plants were 10 and a half inches tall. So one, two, three, four, five. And then next is 11 inches. And it looks like we have one plant that was 11 inches tall. So one, 11 here. And that looks like we have everything, but let's double check our lists to make sure they match. So the unorganized list, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's make sure our least to greatest list has 14 as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We do match here, so we are good to go and move on. We didn't skip anything or count anything twice. So our data is now organized from least to greatest. Let's move on to the next step where we need to find the least and greatest number we are working with. That way we can make a number line that fits what we have. We want all of our numbers to be included. And since our data is in order from least to greatest, this is a pretty quick step. Our least is eight inches and our greatest is 11 inches. Now we need to make our number line. We need to go from eight to 11. We have to make sure we include all of our data and we're going to count up by one half since we have halves involved here. Now, since we know eight and 11 are the least and greatest, this number line will include those and everything in between. So start the number line with eight and count up by one half to 11. So let's draw our line here and we're going to start with the whole numbers. So eight, nine, 10, 11. So eight, nine, 10, 11. Now we need the halves. So we need those right in the middle of the whole numbers. This is eight and a half, nine and a half, 10 and a half. So eight and a half, nine and a half, 10 and a half. And remember, those numbers represent inches and we will label that at the end. 
So there's our number line. And we can move on to the next step where we need to draw the X's. The X's show the number of times each height occurred. And we're just going to go in order from least to greatest. So let's start with eight. How many plants were eight inches tall? One. So we need one X above eight. Now, as we go along, we will try our best to be as neat as possible. The X's should all be the same size and lined up. Now let's move on to eight and a half. So how many plants were eight and a half inches tall? Well, two. So we need two X's above eight and a half. Next, we have nine. And there weren't any plants that were nine inches tall. So let's move on to nine and a half. So how many plants were nine and a half inches tall? Three. So we need three X's above nine and a half. Next, we have 10. And there were two plants that were 10 inches tall. So one, two. Next, we have 10 and a half. We have one, two, three, four, five plants that were 10 and a half inches tall. So we need five X's. One, two, three, four, five. And then lastly, we have 11 inches. And there was one plant that was 11 inches tall. So we need one X above 11. And that's all of the X's. One thing we can do here after we have our X's is to double check we have the correct amount. We have 14 plant heights. So that means we should have 14 X's. And it looks like we do, so we are good to go here. Now notice, all of the X's are basically the same size, the stacks of X's are straight, and the X's are lined up. Meaning, all of the first X's start at the same point and are lined up with each other as we look across. The second X's are lined up with each other as well, so on and so forth. So again, just try to be as neat as possible. So we're done with that step we have our X's drawn, so we're moving on to the last step. Lastly, we need to label and write a title. We know what this line plot is showing us, but for someone else looking at this, the title and label are very important. They help a viewer understand the line plot and the data that is being presented. Let's start with the numbers on the number line and label them. What do those numbers represent? What do they mean? Well, those are inches. So we need to write inches down here. And now those numbers are labeled. So now we need a title that explains what this line plot is about. And there's no one exact correct answer here, but we want something that tells the viewer what the line plot is showing. So let's do heights of Jalen's plants. And we need to write this above the line plot. So heights of Jalen's plants. And that's it. That's our label and title. So we are done with our line plot. We presented the data, the heights of Jalen's plants. So there you have it. There's how to read and understand a line plot and then also how to create a line plot. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.